amazing to see what you can accomplish in 60 minutes of wrestling. Um, we saw an amazing women's match. We have the broadcast for the TBS Women's Championship. And Orange Cassidy, Will Hobbs, man, what a match. All that and more as we review last night's AEW Rampage, and we are starting right now. And was Orange Cassie versus Will Hobbs and I think it was obvious that Cassie was gonna win but I just felt like Hobbs needed to win a little bit more just because I feel like they're trying to build Hobbs up to be a big superstar so I felt like you know it would have been nice to have Hobbs win but I totally understand that Cassidy won he advances I don't have the bracket in front of me so I don't know who he like I believe he wrestles the winner of Ten and Moxley yeah, so he wrestles the winner of Ten and Moxley, which will obviously not go. But the match was really good. I think that Hobbs has definitely improved. Like I said, I think he is going to be a future staple for AEW in the future. So it's nice to see that we're caring about our future in AEW. And I also like to say that Ricky Starks on commentary is like the most beautiful thing ever. Like, is there anything that man is bad at? I think it's a question I should be asking. So next was kind of weird because I was filming my SmackDown review while this segment was actually going on. So Penda and Alex were out there talking about how FTR like stole the AAA titles and how they aren't real luchadors and then FTR attacked them. But like Phoenix wasn't there so I don't know where Phoenix is. And I'm assuming he's not hurt. I, I'm just really confused. Like, if anyone knows where Phoenix is, like, that'd be highly appreciated. But I just thought it was, like, kind of weird. I wouldn't mind if FTR actually held both the AEW and AAA Tag Team Championships at the same time. Because I definitely think, you know, it would establish them more as, like, the top team in AEW, which I know they're trying to do. So I wouldn't necessarily mind if they, if they did that. I think that's kind of cool. Full gear. Good match. And then we had my dream matches of dream matches, which is Britt Baker and Adam Jay. So if you don't know, I actually work with wrestlers a lot, and I've worked with both of these women. And I was like, oh my god, it's my two favorites because I work with them. Um, but this match absolutely killed it. If you did not see the Adam Jay as a future of the women's division while watching this match, you're sadly mistaken. Adam Jay is literally a year into wrestling, and just to see how much she's improved from like her first dark match against Britt to now is just insane. Um, Britt obviously took the win here, but it was a fairly competitive match, like Anna had a really good showing as well, so that was kind of cool. And I like how they alluded to on commentary a lot, like how good Britt is in finding the camera. Because it was like a marquee thing during the match, where Britt like kept on pointing at the camera and being like, point at me! This camera should be live! It was really funny, especially for someone like me who was in producing. Which was super cool. And so they announced the brackets, and I actually made like a mock bracket before AEW started and I instead of having 12 total competitors had 16 and the reason I had 16 was because I felt like it was easier to do 16 instead of 12 with the four buys and I'm truly not a fan of the four buys I think the four buys is actually kind of stupid because I feel like you could have given a lot more women opportunities to compete in this tournament like I'm like although Ty Conti is the number one contender like obviously um you know after Anna's match like Jamie and Rebel were like beating Anna down and Ty came out and held the championship. That's obviously going to be the match of full gear. But it feels kind of weird that like someone who's like the face of dark and elevation is not in this tournament. <laughs> and even someone like a Layla Hirsch, I'm kind of shocked she's not in it. Um, Riho, I'm kind of shocked as well. I just feel like there was a lot more opportunities to put women in this tournament and I was like, wow. Like even Sky Blue, they hinted that Sky Blue was going to be in this tournament and like they didn't put her in it. I was like, wow, okay, AEW. But I'm not mad at it. So my finals are Thunder Rosa and Ruby Soho, which Soho winning. That is the bracket. So in my mock bracket, however, I had Jay Cargo versus Thunder with Thunder winning. But so take what you will with that. <laughs> but in our main event, what a main event we had. So we had Andrade versus Pac 2. 
and what a match. So these two, I don't think can put on a bad match. I think they're literally proving like how WWE did not use them properly. So this was a great main event. So it was kind of confusing because like as soon as this match ended, something happened. So I'm pretty sure Pac won. And then the lights go out and Aleister Black comes out. Or Malachi Black comes out. And Malachi Black comes out, looks at Pac, spits the mist in the face, him and Andrade are teaming up to beat Pac down, and then Cody comes out. So I don't know if Andrade is technically a member of the House of Black. So I think that's what they're hinting at. I, Cause to me it didn't, like, if that isn't the case, I don't know why Black came out. Like to me, it didn't necessarily make sense. But I'm okay with it, meaning that, you know, Cody came out and stuff, and obviously I believe this is going to be a tag team match, probably either next week on Rampage or the following week on Dynamite. But to me, it was just really confusing. I was like, oh, okay, sure. But I guess, take what you will. The ending was great. Cody got cheered, which is something rare that has not happened in a couple of year, in a couple of months. And it was a nice ending to Rampage. And I will say, this is I believe this is the first Rampage without any member of the Elite. Like, Kenny wasn't on in the box, Adam... Brandon Cutler, like anybody, so it was kind of weird not seeing the lead on AEW programming, but I think they pulled through. Um, I also forgot that it wasn't live. I was like, oh, this is from Miami last week. <laughs> but yeah, so I thought Rampage was really good. I think Rampage definitely utilizes the hour to get a lot done. They have a lot of matches for tomorrow's Dynamite, they have a lot of matches for next Wednesday's Dynamite, and even Rampage on Friday. So that's it for me, and I hope you all had a fun wrestling Friday. And I'll see you next time, which if you're following along, should be our Bound for Glory review.